Over the past four years I've had about nine new Royal Enfield motorbikes but I've been a bit sick of those because I've had about I don't know, six or seven Royal Enfield C5s and a Continental GT but I got a bit sick of them about two months ago and got rid of my C5s and that although I never had them all at once but I just kept upgrading the models and decided to try something different I ended up buying a um, Honda CRF 250 Rally when it first came out and I had it for about two weeks and even though I good read reports on it when I got the bloody thing I didn't realise at first how big it was and how overpowering it was and it was like uh, when I first got it it was a 35 inch seat height it was like a giant to sit on and and the side stand once you um, sat on the bike and flicked the side stand it jumped up like a pogo stick and it really was a bastard of a thing to sit on it really wasn't enjoyable to ride at all apart from that I found it gutless to ride and on the hills the 250cc motor was no better than the 500cc Royal Enfield although they're totally different bikes and once I got to the dirt road riding I didn't enjoy it at all so that particular bike lasted 130 kilometers and although I paid 100 no although I paid 8,000 bucks for it I think I moved it on um, Gumtree for six and a half thousand dollars and don't regret the day I ever sold it now I can only compare this bike to Enfield because they're all I've been riding apart from that rig and Honda but it really handles well on the bitumen like it really goes around the corners nicely and well it really is good on the um, dirt too so the tyres are a lot better than what was fitted I think than on the CRF 250 Rally and um, what I do like is the um, clutch the clutch is really easy to use look at that and the bite it's roughly when you're changing gears about there so that would be something like just near the very end of the throw where the other bikes have been down here or there this one would be in gear changes just about right on the end so when you talk about that's how easy lightest clutch I've ever felt I don't mind it like um, I've got no objection always like light clutches so you know if you like light, light clutches this is the bike for you but like I said this, the actual engagement of the clutch is right on the out like so uh, what else is good about it really positive gear change unlike my other bikes always positive no no false neutrals well, I suppose in the newer bikes you never get false neutrals, but when you buy Enfields, you always get false neutrals and a plus a lot of other things. You might pay 9000 in Australia for Enfield, but when you buy them, you're always fixing them. So you, <laughs> that's the thrill of buying. They look good, but you're always fixing them. So you buy them new and bring them home, and after your first ride, that's what you do. You start fixing. This one here is good as far as nice instruments and what I really like is a gear selector you can go along and you know what gear you're in straight away you might think you never use it but I often look down and I think ah oh, it is I'm pulling along six gear and I had it out on the same hill I took the Honda CRF out and the Honda where I back back into fourth gear I pull this same hill at 100 kilometres now and six where the Honda was back in fourth gear I think it was getting up at 80 kilometres now so um, and the windscreen I, I found it pretty good covers the um, wind hitting you across as you're going along uh, some reports I've read said there's no vibration in this bike yeah well I don't agree with that I, I can feel vibration but I'm used to coming from bikes where they're plenty of a vibration but there is vibration not a great deal but it is there I, I felt it in the bath in the peg so it's it's there but not enough to worry you like but it, you know you can't say there's none there but because it is there 
couple of weeks after I got rid of the CRF250, I bought this Versi, Versi 300. So I bought it sight unseen and went down and bought it in Bathurst and I was retailing at seven grand Australian. And um, I ended up doing a deal for six, six right away. Although I never actually rode the way, I got the bloke to deliver it to me in orange. <laughs> so um, that worked all, out all right. So uh, when I got this bike with a 32 inch seat, I found it a lot more comfortable to sit on and no, by, by, no, by, no, by no means overpowering to sit on. So, the first thing I do, I took it out along the road for a bit of a run and I found it, surprisingly, a really enjoyable bike to ride. Good bike to sit on 60 mile an hour. And although I've only done 400 k's or about 250 mile, I think overall, it's a very good bike. Although I don't know much about these adventure bikes, I have had it on dirt, as you can see by the rear wheel. You know, there is dirt on the bike, so I've been on dirt roads. And where I had the Honda CRF on the dirt, I only lasted 400 metres, and I was that keen to get off the dirt. I was pretty happy to get back on the, the black stuff and get back home. So, and that was another reason I got rid of it. I just didn't trust the C CRF 250, but this one, I've been on a fair bit of rough stuff, and... I really didn't mind it. If you um, said what I don't like about this yeah, Versi, it would be the seat was like sitting on uh, uh, sitting on a bloody brick. So what I did was cut the guts out of the seat from underneath, rip back the cover, and cut a cavity out of it, and repacked it with foam then pull the padding back across and then restable each side and so this is what it was once like here and this is what it's like now so my 60 odd year old ass or 65 can handle that now and rides well and I don't get <laughs> bloody pumbled around on the brick and uh, compared to this bastard of a thing. What about build quality? Uh, I think the build quality is extremely good for the amount of money costs, like 6,600. Geez, what do you expect for that sort of money? Like, it, it really is nicely put together. I don't think you can complain about this bike at all unless you're really hard to please. I think it's worth, like, easily that sort of money. It seems like the Honda's the ones overpriced compared to it at 8,000, so... Plus you get the ABS. The ABS, I wouldn't say... Mm, I, I do find you have to do a lot of... have to apply a lot of pressure on the brakes to pull it down, so it's not... You've got the opposite, you've got the light clutch pressure, and you need very heavy pressure on the, on the brakes to pull the bike down, so it's the opposite, so, but... I have had the chance to use the brakes a really hard application once and um, you know like I said no sign of lock up or anything like that and they worked extremely well and brought me down to a, 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 a stop with no sign of drama or anything like that so the brakes work extremely well so uh, as for the lights or anything like that well um, never been out at night time at this stage because I've only had the bike about three weeks it appears to be pretty good on petrol I, I think from what I've been told, I'd get about 400 k's or something like that to a tank. I think right now I've sorted it out with the seat problem, so I think I'd be ready to take it to a good for a couple of good runs at a later date. I think accessory-wise, long term, I might I might go for the um, crash bar with the driving lights up front. That may be an option. I might go for the side um, luggage racks. I don't think I'll go for the top box, but um, overall, I think uh, I think overall it'll sit around for a while. As for buying a Royal Enfield again, I think when the new model comes out with the disc rear wheel and the new um, swing arm, similar to what these bikes have got, I'll probably buy another one of those too. But I think I'll keep this one because I think I can have a lot of fun on this on the dirt roads and 
you know, we have the best of the both worlds because it's hard to keep the habit because the others are more classic looking, but uh, I think overall this is a great bike and if anyone's interested in buying one of these bikes, I would thoroughly recommend buying one because I think you'll have a lot of fun and some people mightn't think 300cc isn't enough, but it'll cruise at 100k is easy and, you know, in most cases that's legally as fast as you can go and it can go a lot faster than that, so... Uh, you know, it'll run to 120 or 130 pretty easy, so, you know, th that would say enough that it can go a lot faster. So I hope you enjoyed listening to what you might think is interesting or you might think it's crap, so choice is yours. Catch up with you later. I had to believe the last time I jumped this fence would have been a good 40 years ago when I had, when I bought a new VJ Charger in the early 70s used to come out here get over the fence go down to that creek there which was in those days full of willow trees and either go down the creek and catch rainbow trout with red silver spinners or go up the tree or I mean go up the creek and up there there were a couple of good holes and get onto an old bloke's property which would have been about the same age as me now and the old bastard if he caught you on the property he still always threatened to tell, tell you that he'd call the police and that was about 40 years ago and that old bastard wouldn't be able to chase us now because he'd be dead and, <laughs> and I'd be flat out walking up the creek to get up there to try to go fishing anyway so that would ruin that so Overall, in those days, it was very good fishing, and that's probably why he stopped us from going into his place fishing. <laughs> but uh, that was then, and this is now, I suppose. But overall, it was pretty good, and we caught a lot of good trout there from one to five pound in those days, and they're probably still in there now, and not many people would know that there was that many trout there.